What I'm going to talk to you about today comes from my heart, from my experience in life, from playing this role as messenger, which I take very seriously, from my efforts to wake up the American people, from my family, from all the letters that I get, from people that I talk to, just like I've talked to many of you here today. I've learned some things. And I think these things need to be passed on to you. And I think you need to start examining yourself, your agenda, your mission. Who are you? What are you about? What do you believe about America? Is it true? Are you helping to divide us more? Or are you helping to bring us together? Do you really understand what this country is all about? If you listened to shortwave radio throughout the 1990s, you were bound to invariably come across the sound of a captivating voice in the wilderness. That authoritative and self-assured voice for five nights a week would educate us, enlighten us, and most importantly, warn us of things to come. So they disguised their true intent and their true teachings, the esoteric, with a system of exoteric descriptions that to the profane would mean one thing and to the initiate or the adept would mean quite another but that was then this is now what sort of creature inhabits the modern domain who is the modern man that voice spoke to us of matters esoteric and exoteric political and supernatural scientific and lawful. That voice was world-renowned author, radio show host, and ex-naval intelligence officer Milton William Cooper, otherwise known as Bill Cooper. In that, I was reared in a military family. My father's an Air Force colonel. He's retired now. He was a command pilot. From, and I traveled all over the world, lived on military bases for most of my life. I was really... Uh, uh, an indoctrinated individual, you might say. I was, I was uh, as establishment as you could get, as gung ho, pro government, pro uh, America, pro military, and that's why I went into the military, um, because that had been so much of my life. I went into the Air Force. I was in the Strategic Air Command for four years uh, as an aircraft and missile hydraulic technician. Bill left the Air Force in 1965 to join the United States Navy. Cooper was a member of the Office of Naval Security and Intelligence, serving as a harbor and river patrol boat captain at Da Nang and the Dong Ha River Security Group, Qua Viet, Republic of Vietnam. William Cooper was awarded several medals for his leadership and heroism during combat, including two with V for valor. He served on the intelligence briefing team for the Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific Fleet. It was during this time Bill would witness something that would forever change his life. While we were on a transit from the Portland, Seattle area, on the surface, I actually saw, I was the port lookout, uh, and I saw the most incredible thing that I think I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and, it, and it had such a profound effect upon my view of the universe and the world that we live in um, that I wish everybody could experience this. I saw come up out of the ocean from beneath the surface of the sea, a huge disc-shaped craft about the size of a midway class aircraft carrier, which is tremendous in size. Came up out of the ocean and rose into the air and tumbled on its axis and went up into the clouds. And I was awestruck, dumbstruck. And uh, I mean dumbstruck, literally, I could not utter a sound. Uh, and my first um, impulse was to tell the officer of the deck that I'd seen a flying saucer. And then luckily for me, I couldn't talk. So I told the officer of the deck that I'd seen something about 15 degrees off the port bow at a relative distance of about two and a half nautical miles. And uh, um, he began to look in that area. And the starboard lookout had heard me tell him this, and he began to look over there. Um, and it did something that, that, as far as I knew, 
was absolutely impossible. I'd been in the Air Force. I'd worked on the state of the art of our of our uh, aviation capabilities, and here I was on the deck of a submarine in the conning tower, and I knew what we had to be able to have to go underwater, and I knew that the two were incompatible. Here's something that came from under the water and flew in the air and performed maneuvers and then came back down and interfaced with the water at tremendous speed uh, and remained intact, uh, which realistically it, it, it never touched the water. The water sort of magically opened up in front of it, but something had to interface with that water. Anything that we had that interfaced with the water in that manner would have been disintegrated. It's like hitting a brick wall. So I was looking at a technology that as far as our laws of physics and what we knew at that time didn't exist. This was in 1966. But when we reached Pearl Harbor, we were not allowed to go ashore to, um, to uh, go on liberty, even though we didn't have the duty. And about two hours after we berthed uh, at the submarine base, a commander from the Office of Naval Intelligence came on board and uh, debriefed each one of us individually in the captain's stateroom. And the, uh, the ultimate outcome of the debriefing was that uh, we didn't see anything, we didn't hear anything, and we had to read rules and regulations uh, that told us that if we ever talked about what it was that we didn't see, um, that we could uh, be imprisoned, uh, we could be fined uh, $10,000, we could lose all pay and allowances due or ever to become due. And I learned at that moment that the United States Navy didn't want anybody to know um, about what we saw and that uh, severe consequences could come down around the neck of anybody who did. This one event had started Bill on what would become a lifelong quest that would lead him into investigative territories such as extraterrestrial life, high-level government cover-ups, and the role secret societies play in all these scenarios. Bill had begun to publicly discuss his findings only to lose his leg after being forced off the road by people who would later visit him in the hospital telling him to keep quiet. Bill went public once again, but made sure this time he was protected. Uh, orig originally back, I guess when Bill was first starting to release all of this material, uh, he had released a document called The Secret Government, uh, subtitled The Origin, Identity and Purpose of MJ-12. And Bill had spent a considerable amount of his fortune at that time, well, there was any fortune, but a um, considerable amount of his money to into the tens of thousands of dollars to get this document released and disseminated across North America and the world. So he had mailed it to all sorts of congressmen, uh, key political figures, as well as some uh, friends and family and things like that, just so people would have this document in their hands. Uh, and that's how I protected myself, or, or at least that's what I thought would protect me, and so far it's proven to be right, was that if I got literally in front of the public overnight, in front of a large public, um, that they wouldn't do anything to me because it would substantiate what it was that I'm saying. And they certainly don't want to do that. It would also create a martyr, and martyrs create tremendously dangerous political movements that they don't want that either. Mm -hmm. Um, so literally, within a 24-hour period, I spent $27,000 mailing a thick packet of information all over the world to people I'd never heard of, didn't know. We went down and got some mailing lists and just mailed this stuff all over the world. And I've been in front of the public ever since. So I think basically those are the reasons. They don't believe that the public's really going to listen to me. Okay. And so far, that's, that's been true. There is a small group of people all over the world who are awakening. Mm -hmm. who are beginning to understand that they've been living their life in fantasy land and who are actively seeking the truth. But by and large, when, when the secret power structure says, as I've put in the first chapter of my book, right out of one of their own technical manuals, that a nation or world of people who do not use their intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence and thus are stakes on the table by choice and consent. They're absolutely right about the majority of people. Mm -hmm.